Presented by Murray Motors of Muncie. We've made it to week seven of the Friday Night Sports Show. Alongside Robin Dean, I'm AJ Donatoni. Two straight weeks now, we've had prime time matchups. This time around, our game of the night features District 11. Tamaqua and North Schuylkill are each perfect through six weeks of the regular season, and they came into their matchup this Friday as our number three and four teams, respectively. Schuylkill League supremacy on the line, and one of these teams will suffer its first loss of the season. Could have a lot of playoff implications down the road. First quarter. North Schuylkill's first possession is Coach Sam Bonner looks on for Tamaqua. Jane Livey rolls out and throws downfield, but the pass picked off by Nate Boyle. And the Blue Raiders take over. Tamaqua turns that into points. Thanks to Boyle again, he caps off the ensuing drive with an eight-yard touchdown run. The PAT failed, so it's 6-0 Raiders. Now in the second, same score, Spartans threatening. Livey calls his own number, goes around the right side. He's in from seven yards out. PAT is good, so it's 7 6 Spartans. But the land of running water answers back. Braden Knobloch heaves one downfield. It's Boyle. He's open, doing it all. 33 yards on this score. It's 13 7 at the half. Fourth quarter, more of the same. And this time, Nick Briner, the other half of that dynamic backfield, he scampers in from 19 yards out. Tabacqua remains perfect on the season, handing North Schuylkill its first loss, 26-14. Jim Thorpe lost its first game last week, looking to bounce back at Blue Mountain, and it's homecoming. There's the queen being crowned before the Olympians take the field for a battle. Let's get into the action. Jim Thorpe driving. Roberto Santiago hands off to C.J. Selby, and watch how many tackles this kid breaks to get some good yardage. Nice effort there by the running back for a big 20-yard run. But the drive later stalls when Selby fumbles as he's being brought down. The ball is recovered by Blue Mountain's Jason Dean. Later, Thorpe regroups, and it's Jaron Geisinger who sneaks into the corner of the end zone for the score. Jim Thorpe back in the win column, 14-0. And no surprise, a shutout. Moving to District 4, a couple of 5-1 and one teams here with Montoursville and Danville. Good matchup. Warriors on the attack. Hunter Shearer, right in stride to Zach Caseman. He runs to the end zone. Ironman low lead, 24-19 in the third, and they would add to it here. Peyton Percy on the jet sweep. We lose him for a second, but then he's back, plunging into the end zone to extend the advantage. Later in the third, the snap this time goes directly to Persing because why not? He's pretty good. He gets in again to make the score 38-19, and then in the fourth, it's more from Persing, this time on the receiving end of that K.J. Riley pass, perfectly placed. How about six touchdowns on the night from Persing alone? Danville takes over in the second half en route to a 52-26 win. Our number one team, Southern Columbia, up against Jersey Shore. First quarter, Tigers running back Gavin Garcia gets a good block and slips through the gap for the opening score. PAT no good. It's 6-0. Soko keeps pounding it on the run game. This time it goes to Garcia, the elder, Gage. He's in for another Tiger touchdown, 13-0. Later in the first, it's quarterback Preston Zachman dropping back, finds Julian Fleming across the middle, and he takes it to the house. All Southern in this one, 62-7. to So we just saw Southern. Now we've got Central Columbia taking on South Williamsport. First quarter, the Blue Jays with the early lead. Trey Devlin going to the corner of the end zone on that bomb. And Xander Bradley, a terrific 24-yard touchdown grab. That gives Central a 10-0 lead. Southside answers back right away. Literally, kickoff taken by Hunter Finn at the seven yard line, and guess what? Gone. 93 yards to the house, so now it's 10 6. Later in the first, back come the Jays. Pitch to Isaac Gensimer, gets a block, finds the corner of the end zone across the pylon. 13 yard score at 17 6, and then Gensimer one more time in the second from three yards out. One more time. Central Columbia with a fine offensive showing. 48-27, Robin is speechless. That was just outstanding. Mm -hmm. One more from the Heartland Conference. It's Mount Carmel and Hughesville. We pick it up in the third quarter. Red Tornadoes already with a sizable lead, but not laying off the gas just yet. Noah Burkowski turns on the Jets for a nice big run, dives for the pylon. It's 42-0 Mount Carmel. In the fourth, more from the Red Tornadoes. This time it's Dylan Pupo weaving through traffic. He breaks a few tackles and is in for the score. Mount Carmel completely dominant in a 48-0 Shut out. Every week on the Friday Night Sports Show, we set out to find some of the wildest and craziest fans of high school football, and our cameras spotted them as they usually do in week seven. Yeah, and this week it goes to my fan club at Clark. Listen to the chant. We want Robin 
ask and you shall receive the Crusaders. There's our fans of the week donning all black in the student section. Looking good, sounding good. It's all good at Wilkes-Barre Memorial Stadium. I love my Coughlin fan club. Uh, I don't know. I might be media biased to put them on <laughs> just because they chant your name. I said, huh? ask and you shall receive. Well, you know what? They're loyal people, so we love featuring them here on the Friday Night Shorts <laughs> Sports Show. So very nice to see Coughlin there. Still to come on the Friday Night Sports Show, we take you through the best matchups in District 2. Plenty of good ones, including the battle for the bell between Scranton and West Scranton. Those highlights are just a couple minutes away. Hi, we're the Danny Cook cheerleaders, and you're watching Friday. 